What's going on, Workforce? Brian here. Chris here. And today we're going to be talking about the future of World of Warcraft. Uh, this comes off of the heels of another video Chris and I just sat down and talked about uh, the you know, BlizzCon and, and kind of a Diablo Immortal. So if you're interested in that, I'll make sure to include a link in the description below. Um, obviously, we, the last conversation Chris and I had about World of Warcraft is talking about are that like what is going on? Like people are uh, seeming to be very dissatisfied with Battle for Azeroth. And uh, the only thing that stood out to me, and you know, and that's why I, like Chris took a lot of notes. He's they've really been he's been telling me they've been showing off and talking very openly about like their roadmap. He, he compared it in the last video as a kind of a weather mapping, like what's coming. Obviously, things are going to change. But the line in which that he talked about Azerite at the presentation just bombed in the room. And I think for me, well, I was like, like, whoa, that, like <laughs> they talked about it. It was like, everybody's like, yeah, like, you know, like this is what's happening. Here's the name. They're doing the public test for this. And oh, by the power of Azerite, it was like, oh, it just kind of just died. And so um, that that's my, like my perspective, because it just felt like so tied into that video that we just made, that conversation we yeah. just had. But what is going on with the future? Like you took a lot of notes, Chris. I want to know, mm -hmm. um, based off our conversation last time, like where where does this fall? Like is this the live letter in which that it's predictable, or are they really listening, or do they make you feel better about your time and investment within uh, with BFA as a whole? So the opening ceremony statements felt. Uh, I didn't feel I learned anything about WoW, but they had a what's next panel back to back to back for every game mm -hmm. um stage to stage so it was almost it was honestly like it's not like you could go to one than the other because you're literally having to jump stages and so i went to the wow one um and uh there's been a ton of panels that deal with wow um because it obviously is one of their bigger titles but the wow what's next one specifically had a big turnout and i talked to multiple people in lines if you come to blizzcon and just to wait in lines uh and as i'm talking to strangers a, a lot a sig a significant number say yeah i mean wow is kind of the game that i, I play and right now i am on a break mm -hmm. like that was the theme the f so the community in general is is aware that now is not the ideal time so um they said you know they opened with a little bit of a joke they talk about uh we've we've aided over 760 million turtles to the water and you know so for those of you that have been doing your daily quests you're aware of the, the turtles to the water um that lady had was at the voice acting panel which was awesome um and they said that their patch style is going to mimic Legion in that you're going to have the 0.5 patches and that there's going to be constant content. And then you're going to have kind of an alternating style between content patches and 0.5 patches. Um, they talked about the Tide of Vengeance patch upcoming. Uh, we know we're getting a new Warfront. We know like we know a lot about the patch because mm -hmm. it's already on the PTR. Yeah. Uh, but they said that one of the key systems in world of warcraft when you do constant content is that you have to be sure that that content must be systems where the rewards are constant and fulfilling those mm -hmm. are the terms they used uh and they said that that's going to be a primary focus of bfa development moving forward so they are aware that the rewards aspect of their systems is what's failing okay. it's not that the dungeons are not good it's not that the emissary quests are not good it's not that in all honesty, the reason people think these things are frustrating is because they feel empty. Why am I doing this? I'm doing yeah. this tap and it doesn't matter. Um, so there, you know, then they went over basically everything in the upcoming patch that's already live on the PTR. So I'm not on the PTR, but for those of for the people who want the knowledge way out there, the benefit of the PTR is that you can always look like a half patch cycle into the future. Mm -hmm. um, they then went on to talk about the new raids and the new vendors we're getting and that there's going to be some Azerite power improvements. Okay. Uh, there's going to be some quality of life improvements. Like uh, one of the big complaints right now is that one of the ways people are filling their time that don't want to take a break is they're leveling alts. And so they are doing things like when you grind a reputation on an alt, there's achievements like, oh, get 100 reputations. Well, then you feel tied to this one character. And so if the game is in a state where leveling an alt is one of the ways to add interest, mm -hmm. then repeating leveling up reputations is really boring. Uh, and so they talked about how they're removing that requirement. So they're going to make it to where like all your reputations count across all your characters. Okay. They did like, that something with like PvP, lot. right? Because I remember hearing about that where the PvP... A heroics or whatever the the term for them that that current that, that uh, reputation is that they made that across all characters right um yeah so the other thing is like if you have like a piece of gear or something 
uh, that requires a reputation, they're removing that as well. Okay. So if you go spend a bunch of time unlocking cosmetics, now it didn't sound like um, a, a few people that I was talking to heard it as like, oh, reputations are now shared. So if I have like friendly with one, I'll be able to go interact with that vendor on another. That is not how I heard that statement. I heard that statement in that if you buy the item on the one character and it is an account wide item, like a piece of, of transmog or something, that is purely used for cosmetic you don't have reasons. To grind it, it just to equip it, it on yes, another. I unlock a, a leather chest piece on my one character for being honored by so and so. All of my other leather wearers will have access to it. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, so they're also reworking PvP talents, uh, they're reworking Warfront quests, they're adding uh they're adjusting the war mode bonuses because on some servers like mine war mode for horde is not a threat because we outnumber them so much mm -hmm. that by the time the zone fills up with people even with the cross server like the sharding system that they have we still outnumber them uh and so most hours of the week if i hop on war mode is just a way to pick up a bonus yeah. for free it's very little risk and so they said they're adjusting the rewards to be uh, based on the risk. So they're going to be adding additional bonuses to the underrepresented group okay. um, to make it worth their time. Uh, so 8.1 8 rolls, December 11th in the US, the 12th in Europe, the 13th in Asia. And, and it sounds like across this, they didn't go too much across like how they're improving Azerite, mm -hmm. but that they are going to overhaul that system at that time. Okay. So that gives them another month a week's month gives them yeah. a month uh a little over a month actually to finish up finalizing these changes and that they are listening okay um i will say that from a tone standpoint they were really excited about their patch they were really excited about how well bfa did it launch and how smooth it went mm -hmm. but that it was almost apologetic in in my opinion in understanding that it's not perfect it's not there now gotcha. keep in mind that our most recent president change in for blizzard is the guy who led wow mm -hmm. uh, for a long time and that the guy who is now in charge of wow is a guy who is a i think he, i believe he played i could be wrong on this i believe he played a major role in like draenor and legion so he's aware of current content but if you talk to most wow players those are not the two best foot forward for the world of warcraft franchise mm -hmm. so i think this guy has a lot um to learn about how to communicate with the community um, on stage. He didn't always seem comfortable in my opinion. Occasionally he would say something and the crowd wouldn't cheer and it like caught him off guard. So like he was practicing in front of his mirror and he's like, this is gonna drive him nuts. And then <laughs> he's like, yeah. And so, I mean, they're doing some interesting things. They are taking chances. When a game is this big, sometimes it, it, it comfortable. It feels and so you're like- It's the same. So like our next raid is story-wise is, for those of you that haven't been following the BFA, uh, line Alliance and Horde are battling it out right now, and so our next raid is actually on the other faction. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be the first time in WoW history where Alliance and Horde have different raids, because the final boss of a raid is tied to story. Always, right. it's the big, it's the big moment, which means that we have to fight somebody from the other faction. So Horde can't be in the Alliance raid because we wouldn't fight a Horde leader. So I'm really excited to see kind of how that plays out, how like a raid on an enemy city works as a raid where we have eight bosses themed around the other faction. Um, part of me wonders if there's gonna be complaints that the raids aren't equally difficult. One faction has an advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but the only way to not do that is to make this an empty reskin where it's the same fights, but it's your faction reading the lines to me and my faction reading the lines to you. Right. Uh, so I, I kind of hope they're different, but it just, it does feel like they're not done taking chances, but they're not done making adjustments. Right. Um, they say it's going to, the raid is actually not going to be coming out with the patch. It's coming out sometime after the holidays. After the holidays, because they want you to be able to enjoy, enjoy the holiday. holidays. They're really worried about their progression raiders. Um, and I think that's a really clever way of also kind of, not overwhelming you with content, but also like keeping that constant content, that constant, you don't have a reason to unsubscribe. That's kind of been the theme, like WoW Classic is gonna be underneath your WoW subscription. Mm -hmm. So they're just building in more and more reasons that you should keep this gaming version of a Netflix subscription alive. Um, they had some new cutscenes they showed us. I was not able to capture those easily because of the way the lighting was in the room, but um, I don't know if Brian will, or if you guys can find them, I'm sure they're out there on the internet. Uh, 
they're in 8.1.5 we're getting two more races so we got two races last time and then two races with the expansion we're getting even more races we're getting cold tyran humans and zandalari trolls okay they're both gonna have new gear sets the uh, the new what's that called heritage gear um they've got new mounts they've got new druid forms um the trolls had like 10 different classes including paladin the the new humans looked like they were going to be able to play seven different classes including druid and shaman they were of course getting a horse mount so that was kind of lame uh but the druid <laughs> forms were awesome so yeah. i encourage okay. you to go over to the top head and pull up those those druid forms uh the druid forms for both i thought were very impressive um dark moon fair is getting updated with a new roller coaster children's week is getting updated to the new zones which is not shocking but it's nice to see We're, they're adding three new micro holidays um including like vast year driving and a free t-shirt day um Draenor is getting added to the time walking events which is great because Draenor was when time walking was added so it of course had never been on there um it'll have two new mounts uh, they're adding portal rooms to Stormwind and Orgrimmar, which tells me that they are listening to complaints about just quality of life in general, because right now they can't just keep finding nooks in the cleft of shadow for Horde and just shoving things where I don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. um, and the portal rooms are actually being designed with additional spaces. Uh, so there are unused spots for portals. So when they add other zones or other expansions, there's room to add more portals. Okay. Um, so they're, they're looking ahead. Uh, they're adding tools of the trade quest lines for professions, which will give tools of the trade. Those are already going to be out on Wowhead. I tried to grab a picture. They showed them. It's an epic item for each one. They do really neat things like give you extra enchanting maps or whatever. Um, Brawler's Guild is back with new bosses, new quest lines. Shirts seems to be the new theme reward. There's lots of new shirts, lots of new mounts. Um, and then they went into, okay, in general, at once we're done dealing with quality of life and once we're done, so we're currently balancing content we're delivering a bunch of new content and well what else can we do uh well we can also go back and remaster old content so one of the things about this expansion in particular is it's taking us back into a lot of very very old zones and they just don't hold up right uh, yeah so it's a great chance to talk about remastering as a theme and so i hope we see a lot more of it what they're starting with here is they're remastering warsong gulch and arathi basin and warsong gulch and arathi basin they showed off the concepts of kind of where they're at and they're keeping literally every rock is in the same place every pole is in the same place every plant is in the same place and i really appreciate that they didn't take this as an opportunity to redo something yeah. that didn't need to be redone right um they're classic maps they work fine just leave it alone don't risk making it worse in 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 the hopes to make it better okay. um but they're, they're all new and higher res and they look so much better um and then what's interesting about that is because of the way warfronts works and because of all the new technologies have since those came out god 10 years ago uh <laughs> they're doing a new arathi comp stomp brawl where you can go into arathi basin and they showed uh they go hey if you guys, if you guys wouldn't mind we'd like to show a little bit of a match in arathi basin so we saw te two teams charging each other and fighting and they go so you know what you just saw was human players fighting NPCs. Huh. So, so they're bringing that some was AI to that. Super cool that you could fight. Yeah, it's called the Arathi Comp Stomp Brawl. Okay. Uh, they're and then an eight point and then here's where I really appreciate they said like since they can't prove to us they're listening because they can't tell us what the Azerite adjustments are and they can't roll them out today, right. what they can do instead is they can lay out a content lineup that kind of looks like a weather forecast where like it gets less accurate as you look further out, but I can look really far out. Mm -hmm. So then they went into like 8.2.5. 8 I mean, when is that? That's way into next year. 8.2.5, we will have flying by that point. The expansion will have been out, what, six, eight months? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're getting new, uh, it looked like new Worgen skins, new Goblin skins, three male, three female for each. 8.2 is going to be themed on the Naga Assault. Um, Naga, Naga is going to come assault Kul Tiras and Zandalar, and then we're going to go out into the ocean, and we're going to go to the land of the Naga and the Eternal Palace, and that's going to be the raid. Well, that's fine, but then is our dungeon going to be that? No, our dungeon is actually going to be an ancient gnomish city. So we're getting two entirely new zones. Nice. One themed around the dungeon, one themed around. And the dungeon is going to be a mega dungeon. 
um, which is super cool. So for those of you that kind of remember how like, I think it was Karazhan that rolled out that way. Um, Mega Dungeons are where you get like eight bosses in a dungeon. It is going to be released on, I believe, let me see if I can find my notes here. Um, mythic only. So it's not coming out with a normal or a heroic mode. Just it's mythic. Gonna be, it's going to be mythic only at, it said at, at launch. So okay. it doesn't mean they're not going to change their mind on that. New loots, new pets, new mounts. Um, it's called Mechagon. Uh, eight bosses. King Mechagon will be the final. Um, you're getting new factions to kind of work through rep. The Naga one sounded, I, I think I heard they said, well, Alliance will be getting this. They didn't say anything. I, maybe I just missed Horde. So it sounds like we're getting two reps there, one for each faction. Okay. But in the gnomes, we're getting one that we share. So like, I, I know I just feel like I just keep going and I'm still scrolling. Like there's there's now heritage armor for Torin and gnomes. There's, you know, new main story, of course, coming out with Sylvanas, Sarfang, Jaina. They, they showed a cutscene that was awesome. Um, Heroic Warfront is going to get added, so that's ten plus players with new mechanics, higher difficulty, higher rewards. Okay. Uh, I, I can just keep going. New PvP season, and so like, are they listening? Yes. Are they waiting to listen to come out with new content? No. They are coming out with new content, and they are listening, and they are going back and plugging old holes that have been on the to-do list forever. Yeah. I think WoW looks like it's headed in a good direction. Okay, so uh, coming out uh, off of this, then you're you're feeling pretty confident in the future of this uh, this expansion itself because oh. it's that you know it's a uh, game development isn't a you know a flip of the switch right because it's like okay we got that feedback we talked about this with eureka that it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in pyros because oh feedback for this eureka well we've already been working on this content and working on this content so you can't really make a lot of quick change directions uh, as far as it goes so it's going to be uh, yeah we'll have to see especially as they start talking about 8.2 8.25 which, you know, I guess, uh, what's the typical patch cycle for WoW? Is it, is it three, four months, or is it like, uh, you know, how often do they deliver the big content patches? That, that feels about right off the top of my head. I, I don't know it. I, I never really know. I always have to ask this guy, Brian, how they, the Final Fantasy Brian. stuff's going to roll out. I, I typically just wait for them to hand the date, because knowing the date sooner than that doesn't help. Yeah. Um, but, it, yeah, I mean, I would go back and look at Legion patch cycles if I was trying to predict. Um, exactly. I, we're not getting our, our next big raid until after the new year uh at least after the holidays so mm -hmm. you know I, I would very easily expect that to be early next spring or, or something like that so um, we know though that 8.1 is going to be december 11th yeah one. so that's like that's yeah. coming up we'll have to see i guess what happens uh and how yeah. that August? yeah yeah something like that it makes sense i mean August um, yeah we're, we're also from final fantasy perspective i think we're thinking the next patch is going to be in january or maybe early february mm -hmm. Uh, so lots of content <laughs> gonna be rolling out. Yeah. Oh man, this is gonna be a, it'll be a crazy 2019 um, as we roll into that. Uh, Chris, um, I mean, I don't have a, a ton to add about this. Wow, doesn't necessarily impact me. My my biggest uh, frustration we talked about in the other video is with Diablo. So um, I, I'm happy. I'm really actually happy to hear that. You know, uh, coming into this, uh, they're at least saying some of the things that you're looking for. Uh, as far as the community goes, we'd love to know what you're thinking in the comments below. Just sound off, let us know. Also, be sure to let Chris know um, what you were thinking. If you see him out at, at BlizzCon today, I'd like to have that conversation with you. But um, Chris, I guess, uh, I mean, you really just ran down a ton of content. Uh, do you have any final thoughts? Do you have anything that you want uh, yeah. that you haven't been able to share with everybody uh, going over your notes? This really tells me to keep my subscription active and to, to give it a shot. Um, these announcements all sound great. What they showed off looks great. Every cinematic they show, Blizzard is great at making cinematics. Uh, they don't make nearly as many as Final Fantasy, but when it comes to cinematics, the quality is definitely there. Mm -hmm. um, I I wouldn't say that this guarantees WoW is going to be fixed. This guarantees WoW is going to be incredible. But I do think that it shows hope. It shows promise. Um, if even a third of these systems turn out to be great, if even a third of these new zones turn out to be fun, uh, then that's enough for me, right? Like I'm yeah. not playing 100 hours a week. Right. So uh, would I love to pick my favorite third of this? Sure, but honestly, whichever third turns out to be the most fun is the third I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm willing to play all of it. I'm willing to go sit in PvP. I'm willing to sit in dungeons. I'm willing to sit in raids. Um, these are all things I'm willing to do. And so when they talk about updating emissary quests, awesome. Like I, I play a couple hours a week, that's great. 
So I just need something in front of me that feels like I'm not working towards nothing. Yeah. Uh, I need something in front of me that feels like it has depth and that it has something that means something. Uh, they are making, they did talk a little bit about making adjustments to things like instead of kind of doing, they don't want things to feel like you just do this bucket of stuff. They want it to feel like, oh, if you do a little each day, like that's really better. So they're, they're, they're very much working on pacing. Um, so it's not, they don't, I don't think they feel that their content is bad and I don't think their content is bad, but the reward structure and the pacing is, is something that they've really got to get on point. Okay. Uh, you know, so I, I'm really hopeful for wow. So my final thoughts are, are absolutely wow could be headed in a good direction. This could turn out to, we have a lot of this expansion left. So to say BFA is like dead in the water or is guaranteed to be great. There's a lot, there's a lot of runway left before we get to, to close the book on whether or not this was a good expansion. So I, I'm hopeful uh, right. and I'm forward to getting back into it. That's great. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I'm very, uh, so what do you have on your docket uh, for the rest of today? So like you're going to be at BlizzCon, what are you, what are you hoping yeah. to hit up today? And then so there's we'll a couple of panels. That. There's, there's a wow panel. Uh, I think there's like a voice acting panel that looks interesting. There's, there's a lot. Um, I went to a lore panel. I know I'm not the lore guy, but I always end up going to lore panels because I, I think what's interesting about lore is that I find it interesting that I don't find it interesting. Like I find it interesting that it doesn't grab me. Yeah. Um, and so I like to go to those panels and try to understand like where they're coming from, because I know that people spend a huge amount of time in these games on lore. And so I just find it fascinating to, to listen to people talk about a job that they know that half the population ignores. Uh, and so I really, I, I have just enjoyed going to different panels and then mostly today I'm going to be kind of picking and choosing which panels I can skip and watch later on a virtual ticket so that I can go sit in demo lines because some of these demos they're making available to virtual ticket holders. If you came to the event and you use your, like I can log in with my authenticator and I can use those demos is my understanding. So like, I think uh, the wow classic demo is up for me, but I, I don't think that the Diablo thing is a demo. So I want to go try that on the floor. Uh, and that's kind of my plan for today. Right. And talk to you from somewhere else random yeah we're gonna just keep moving all around all, all over the place i'm just finding somewhere that i can record <laughs> well uh, chris i hope you have a fantastic time i cannot wait to hear what you think about uh, diablo immortal because i think essentially it's like does it feel like is it do you go and you play it and you're like play it and you're like whatever it's just it, you know it's just cash grab i'm done or you're like man this really feels a lot of fun and if it feels a lot of fun that's only i mean either way i think i'm gonna be frustrated because it's like oh man if you have to play this version of it it's so good with six players and then it's like and but you know it's like i'm not gonna play it on my phone <laughs> that's, that's, i need my phone's battery for business but uh all right guys let us know uh, what you think uh again like we said chris is out of blizzcon if you guys see him be sure to tweet at him at works a game uh, on twitter if you guys have uh if you want to have any questions answered or if he's checking out things he can he can hopefully give you some answers uh in semi-real time sound off in the comments below we look forward to having these conversations with you we'll be back to talk about even more stuff uh as it relates to blizzard video games and all the good things in life uh for work to game my name is brian my name is chris thank you so much for watching this video and hope you have a fantastic day hey buddy yeah i'm talking to you you yes you on youtube you look into my eye look into the feasting eye of Charles Gubu, a.k.a. Chuck. Listen, I totally know you want to hit that subscribe button. It's really important you do. Trust me, it's worth it. It's worth it. The eyes don't lie. Okay. All right. Good talk. Good talk. Oh, and thanks to our patrons. You guys are amazing. Gubu. Chubu. Out.